As we head into the United Nations Food System Summit, as Amina has just told us, let us use this summit to cement a single coordinated African position that will be placed before the United Nations Food System Summit. On our part, my administration remains committed to the food system transformation agenda. We are remodeling Kenya's food systems into one that exploits the vibrant energy of our youth, thereby making it more inclusive, innovative, collaborative, as well as dynamic. Equally important to note is that our renewed drive anchors our food systems transformation agenda on data-based decisions. Armed with the relevant and precise data, we are better able to make targeted interventions that address water scarcity, climate change, land pressure, and the competition between subsistence food crops and export cash crops. The United Nations Food Systems has given us a platform to reflect and to rethink our strategies of making our food systems more resilient and sustainable. Kenya has been fully engaged in this process. Our national and sub-national dialogues throughout the country have driven the identification of the actions needed to achieve the food security pillar of our nation's Big Four agenda. These all-inclusive and comprehensive discussions were undertaken at all levels of our nation, from the grassroots at the village and the local level, all the way to the national level. Four critical pathways and priorities for Kenya's food systems were identified, and these actions are youth, digital in innovation, diverse diets, and climate change. Specifically, we aspire to increase the number of young people receiving school-based agricultural education, increasing the uptake of digital agricultural solutions, improving the diversity of diets, including fresh fruit, vegetables, dairy, meat, fish, as well as grains, and lastly, to heighten climate action to build resilience of our agriculture and food systems generally. Further, the agricultural sector transformation and growth strategy that my administration is currently reforming the sector by increasing output and productivity, boosting incomes in agribusiness, and ensuring household resilience and food security. So Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I call upon each one of us, both state and non-state actors, to use this Africa Green Revolution Forum to make commitments towards transforming our food systems. On our part, Kenya is making tremendous efforts to foster the realization of this shared aspiration among all nations of the world. As we all undoubtedly appreciate, our youth and our children have been raised with the perception that agriculture is an antiquated and perhaps even an unworthy occupation. Rather than venturing into spaces within the agricultural sector, they would prefer white-collar occupations, particularly those in traditional prestige professions or in the emerging areas of digital content and ICT. And since 2013, my government has been very focused on trying to ensure that 100% food um, and nutrition security is actually, is actually attained. And we've put in place various measures, including programs for food and crop diversification. We have an e-voucher program that supports staple crop farming, and as well as uh, farmers in the livestock and uh, dairy value chain as well. We've also put in place programs that encourage the growth of indigenous food crops, such as sorghum, millet, and cassava. And we're also encouraging people to embrace the growth and consumption of indigenous vegetables, another more nutritious other than conventional vegetables. And this, I believe, is very critical, especially for all those of us in arid and semi-arid areas. We've also been moving towards flour blending and 
flower fortification policies that are encouraging millers to blend our staple maize flour with either cassava, millet, and beans, and other type of uh, uh, crops as well. And I believe that all of this will not only help in commercializing such crops, but will also bolster our efforts towards our nutrition outcomes as well. And in this, we're working both as a national government, together with our county governments, to develop elaborate training systems as well, and to also have a good number of extension workers who are out there on nutrition-sensitive agriculture. And we're also looking, as I said in my speech earlier, at having more youth participation in the provision of both digital extension work, advisory services, but also engage in agriculture directly themselves. During this COVID-19 period, especially at the height of lockdown, we also started looking into other areas. And uh, one of the programs that we started uh, was the distribution of materials to start one million kitchen gardens across especially our urban areas uh, that were hardest hit during, during the lockdown process. And this is something that we're also continuing to focus ourselves on to also ensure that the urban working uh, uh, people are also able to be food secure in their respective areas. And this is a program that we're also, we're also looking at. We're also putting in place programs that will ensure that uh, loss also occasioned by weather or disease-related shocks. We're also able to ensure our farmers so that uh, they are able to um, overcome the risks that sometimes occur as a result of unexpected shocks, either weather or disease, or disease-related. And we're trying to move towards de-risking agriculture as well and making it a much more secure space uh, where we can have a situation where our farmers are guaranteed uh, uh, um, their livelihoods. Your Excellencies, permit me to commence my remarks by extending my gratitude to all of you for joining us today as we convene under the auspices of the Alliance for a Green Revolution in Africa to reflect on the bold steps that our respective governments are taking to transform our respective food systems. On behalf of the government and the people of Kenya, I want to thank you for honoring Kenya by granting us the privilege of hosting once again the Africa Green Revolution Forum Summit. This 2021 summit offers an, opportunity, an opportune moment for all our nations to put our thoughts together, accelerate action, and make commitments to deliver resilient food systems for our continent and our people. We convene amidst the disruption that has caused untold grief and strain to the lives and livelihoods of millions in our countries, across the continent, and globally. No aspect or sector of social economic life has been spared. The enormous pressure on our food systems caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and its effects has exposed the vulnerabilities of our food systems and reversed hard-earned gains that we had secured earlier. Just as an example, two of the greatest drivers of agriculture are the manufacturing sector and the hospitality sector. Travel restrictions have severely constrained the hospitality sector which has in turn led to subdued uptake of agricultural produce that causes massive losses to farmers. In light of the realities that we are confronted with, now more than ever, the call to accelerate action and make increased commitments to deliver resilient food systems is urgent. Therefore, at this year's forum, we must identify immediate actions and steps that are required to accelerate progress and recovery towards inclusive agricultural transformation. In order to overcome these negative perceptions and to show our children and youth the nobility as well as the profitability of agriculture, 
We are elevating the place of agriculture in our schools by revitalizing the 4K clubs. We are doing this because Kenya's 31,218 primary schools and their enrollment of close to 10 million school-going children offers a vast network through which knowledge about food and nutrition security can be boosted. The revitalized 4K clubs will provide a holistic approach to positive youth development at home, school, and also within the community by building on the strength of the youth as active agents of community development. Through these clubs, the values of patriotism, volunteerism, and the dignity of agriculture will be inculcated in our children during their early formative years. Further, as a leader in school meals programs since the 1980s, Kenya is also taking an active role in the UN Food Systems Summit School Meals Coalition. Worldwide today, 388 million school children have been receiving school meals since the pandemic struck. Together with our partners, including the World Food Programme and the African Union, we will work to find sustainable and innovating funding sources for schools, feeding programs, and with the multiple stakeholders to achieve better outcome for school children globally. So Your Excellencies, as I conclude, I want to invite this summit to ponder our, our current crisis and to ponder so boldly, frankly, and with a spirit of hope in the possibilities that we can make a reality. Let us reflect on the words of President J.F. Kennedy, who once famously, famously said, and I quote, the war against hunger is truly mankind's war of liberation, end of quote. We have an opportunity to fundamentally recast the position of food and nutrition security in our countries, in the continent and globally, if we have the will, I believe we can find the way. With these remarks, ladies and gentlemen, I want to have the great pleasure of declaring the African Green Revolution Forum 2021 Summit officially opened, and I wish each and every one of us very fruitful deliberations. Asante Nisana.